Hey again everyone, so we're back and let's continue on our Pong tutorial inside of Unity uh, for how to make mobile games. So the last thing that we did, just to recap, is we basically added in uh, our Pong ball here and we got this bouncing off the walls, we added in the walls uh, and we did a little bit of scripting on how to get the physics object to start moving, uh, which was the add force uh, script function call that we used. So there we can see it bouncing around. And in the first video we had the uh, we created the paddle in the camera, of course. So there we go. All right. So let's move on to the next thing. So um, what we want to do is we obviously want to have some kind of game loop where we can have a game over state. So for example, we if the ball goes past the bottom of the screen here, then it would be game over and go back into say the menu system or the score screen or something like this or uh, perhaps you know some kind of uh, leaderboard scene that you might have on an iPhone or an Android. And then once back into the menu scene, you want to click on play or whatever, and then go back into the game. So that's that's the kind of loop that we're going to create here. So the first thing that we need to do is create the scene. And let me just check where I'm up to. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So what we're going to do is basically save the current game scene. Now, a scene is basically a level. It could be a, a level. It could be a world. It could be a menu scene. It could be... Um, an instruction screen, anything like that. So when, when I say scene, all I just mean is like a, a folder or a part of the project that's combined together. So in Unity we call these scenes. So if I save the scene as file, sa sorry, file save scene as, go to scenes and then type in menu. Let's click on save. And what you'll see is like it's exactly the same. So what I've done is I've, um, is I've just saved this as menu and the reason that I've just I basically just created two of the same scenes, but one is the game scene, one is the menu scene. And the reason that I've just copied it as opposed to go file new scene is that we've already set up the camera, we've already set up the dimensions, we've already set up like the, the camera as an orthographic object. Uh, that means that it's not got any perspective, it's just seeing a flat 2D world. Um, we've also, say you're doing another game and you have a bunch of scripts that you want to have in every game scene, then it's easier to just save the scene as and then rename it and then delete the things that you don't need. Uh, and that's what I often do. I, I, I just do it that way as opposed to creating a new scene because in a new scene then I have to change the camera, I have to add the scripts again. So this is a little bit of a faster way to do it. So the only thing that we need inside of this, uh, this menu scene here is right now is the main camera. So if I click on all of these and I'm just gonna click and hold down Command or Control on the uh, PC and then right click and then just click Delete and then everything's gone from the scene. So this is our blank menu scene now. Okay, So we deleted all objects. So the next thing is we want to create a play button, obviously. Um, we can use this technique that I'm about to show you to create other buttons as well, but um, we're just going to create a basic play button. So game object, create other, and then 3D text. Okay, So a 3D text is basically just like a 3D object, like a cube or a sphere, um, but it's a text inside of the world. Usually we can have UI objects. UI objects are like buttons and, and bars and things like that. You can have them displayed on the camera so they're rendered in front of everything. But what I like to do is usually I like to have the 3D object in the scene because it is a little bit easier to handle and it doesn't require you to change anything on, depending on the screen size. So usually what will happen is, for example, if you have a small screen, um, or a different resolution screen, or two different resolutions. If you do a, a UI on the camera, it will basically resize that and it would, might look a little bit strange. So I like to use a 3D text object generally. Uh, they're pretty easy to handle. So if I click on, uh, click on the new text, I'm going to click enter and I'm going to call this play button. Enter. And go to the text component here inside of the inspector. Click on that and I'm going to type play. Okay, now I'm just going to move this in the scene a little bit, so I'm going to click on the uh, play button object, click on W, and just move it over slightly. And I'm going to click on uh, R, and just select the middle square, and then just drag it down a little bit, just so it's a, it's a little bit smaller. Okay, W, move it over slightly. Okay, that's fine there. And obviously this is very basic, we'll, we'll be improving this and uh, sort of making it a bit prettier later. All right, so let's add a box collider. So if I go to component physics box collider, 
Now, what this does is, as you can see, if I if I go, uh, I tap on play button, put my mouse over the uh, the scene view here, and click F. That'll zoom it in. And I'm just going to click hold down Alt, left mouse click, and move the mouse just to rotate around. So uh, this has added a green box, and this green box is a collider. A collider is used for if you want the objects to interact, like two balls hitting each other, they can bounce off each other. Those two balls need a collider. If they don't have a collider, they're just a visual object in the scene, or they could just be an empty object in the screen with, with some uh, script attached to it. But in this case, the reason that we've got a collider around the play button is that we want to shoot our uh, a laser or array into the scene when we tap on the screen so that the laser will in that will laser will register oh i just tapped on the play button if i didn't have a collider the ray or the laser would go straight through it and we wouldn't it would it, would, it wouldn't register any kind of tap so that's why we're doing this so if i just click on the uh the axis tool here and move it so it's flat and zoom out a little bit by using the middle uh middle mouse scroll button i'm just going to resize this so it's a little bit bigger so x Holding down left mouse, and um, sorry, nope, that's the wrong one. Control, Command and Z and Control and Z to, to go back, to undo. Okay, it's the size that we want to do. So I'm left mouse holding, and I'm going to drag this to the right, and then Y, I think it is. Yeah, there we go. And what this does is it just makes the tap area a little bit bigger, because if it's too small and someone's using their finger, it might not register the tap, um, because obviously the finger is quite large. If it's a mouse, it's not a problem, but we want to just make that a little bit larger so it's easy to tap. And then what we want to do is click on Is Trigger. And the reason we click on Is Trigger is because we want it to react to a script uh, script object. Um, if, it, if we don't have Is Trigger, it becomes more of a physics object. So that means that a ball can hit it. Uh, in this case, we don't want any kind of physics from this play button. We don't want it to interact in the world with gravity, with any other object. We just want it to uh, act as a trigger. So that means that if, if, it, um, uh, if somebody taps on it and then we shoot our ray or laser, we just want that to be a script call, uh, a function call, so that we can make something happen. I know that's a little bit confusing, and I'm probably not explaining that very well right now, but bear with me, it will make sense, uh, especially as you go along and, and begin to use uh, Unity a lot more. Okay. So we've added the box collider, set the trigger to true. Okay, we want to create a menu script. Okay, so I'm left clicking on Pong scripts. I'm going to right click, create JavaScript, and then I'm going to call this menu scene. And I'm going to double click on that to open it. And I'm just going to grab my code here and I'm going to paste this in and I'm going to explain it. So dragging all this code. Control copy or command copy, delete, control V or command V to paste, and there we go. 